What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. This time we are focused on ungraded, loose, complete figures as well as vehicles. I think I snuck in a die cast. A couple of weird items that I wanted to talk about, some last 17 figures. As always, thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow this channel to happen. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and getting access to all videos 24 hours early, my Patreon is patreon.com slash actionfiguregrader. Let's dig into some items. We've got a loose, complete Small head Han Solo. This is one I still need in my collection. I still have not picked one up. This one had just a little bit of wear around the buckle, as you can see, as well as on the lower portion of his shirt there. So a little bit of wear to it, but overall pretty nice looking figure, probably like an 80 grade overall. This one sold in an auction for $67 plus $6 shipping. So that gives you a data point there. I've seen some near mint plus examples that were just pristine sell closer to about 80 bucks so 67 dollars plus six dollar shipping is about right just giving the slight wear to that figure uh here was a beautiful kenobi this one was a hong kong kenobi blue saber i'm assuming with all of these items that the, the items are legit with no repro but it, it looks complete and uh in great shape and you know i'm assuming that that saber is not reproduction but uh, a, a really clean looking obi-wan overall this is easily i would think probably an 80 to 80 plus minimum uh just depending on limb tightness things like that but uh really really good example there that one sold for 51 dollars plus six dollars shipping again that's a pretty good deal uh i've seen these regularly sell for 75 to 80 bucks so 51 bucks plus shipping is pretty good deal uh, we've got a x-wing fighter with the original box it was advertised as working with working electronics and uh, the box was just that. It did not have any of the inserts or catalog or anything like that. But that's the original uh, X-Wing box from, uh, well, it might be the second issue. It, it looks like it's missing the long play logo on there. But still probably, what, a 1978 box, 1979, somewhere in there. That one sold for $760. $760 took that one home. Now, the ship was really clean without kind of any yellowing, it appears, on the body of the X-Wing, all the stickers look really great. So, you know, a, a very nice example, but uh, that price was really shocking. 760 bucks for that was a little more than I would have paid for that, but uh, it gives you another data point. Here was what was advertised as a complete Death Star space station playset, and it included the box, as you can see there, and here is the actual Death Star, uh, one of those timeless items that Never gets old to look at, and uh, you can see the Dianoga trash monster there, along with the trash compactor. Pretty awesome box. Box looked to be in pretty great shape overall. That one was listed for $900. The best offer that was accepted was $850, plus $67.56 shipping. So, uh, you know, let's call that about $920 bucks or so took that one home. And uh, that's just always an expensive place set, especially if it's complete with all the, all the uh, stickers and so forth. So... You know, it is what it is. It's not something I'll have in, my, have in my collection, just given the size of this thing, but it's really cool to look at again. Uh, next up, we had a loose, complete 12-inch series Chewbacca. It included his bandolier and pouch, the bowcaster, as well as all the pack-ins inside of the packaging there. And uh, obviously, it's been opened, but that one did sell for $225 plus $20 shipping. Uh, next up was a die cast bomber, and we covered one of these that we weren't sure what was going on with it, whether it had either been touched up or the, the photos had just been kind of brightened. But uh, this one very clearly was very appropriately marketed as, as having heavy yellowing to the wings as well as to that plastic portion on the die cast metal body. And uh, that one sold in an auction for $355 plus $778 shipping. So that gives you maybe a little bit more realistic sales price versus the other one that sold for, uh, it was, well, I, I can't remember the, the number now, but it was it was a lot of money. It was like $1,300. So uh, for one that has some yellowing, that at least gives you a lower price data point. Uh, here was the Hoth playset, the Ice Planet playset with the cardboard backdrop and the AT, AT Walker that kind of pops out in a three-dimensional style. And this one was complete with the radar dish. That one sold for $112 plus $27.60 shipping. Pretty rough shape overall. You can see how beat up the cardboard is, but uh, one of those items that you don't see pop up very often and, and kind of interesting to see. Uh, next up, this price really surprised me. This was uh, the 
ATAT walker that was advertised as complete and in, with working electronics. Again, these chin guns are very often faked. Uh, there's a lot of repro of those out there, but uh, just keep that in mind that you got to be careful of that. But assuming that everything's legit on this, this one's still sold for big money, $549.99 free shipping. So we've documented a few on the channel that have sold closer to around 200 to 300 but uh, this one did command 550 and I think it's because the seller demonstrated in the photos that the chin guns were working and that the electronics were working on that one. Uh, next up, we had a complete Yoda, and this one sold for $77 plus $6 shipping. This is the Orange Snake Cherry-Eyed Yoda, and uh, that's probably about right. I mean, it looked pretty clean overall. I had one little mark there on the uh, right-hand foot, but the hands were in great shape, and it was obviously complete with all of the accessories and his robe. Uh, but probably like an 80 plus condition and you know they've I've seen them sell for in the 80s and 90 dollar range for the brown snake Yoda that can command easily double that price so uh, that's probably a pretty fair price just given how nice the condition was on that Yoda I got a couple of different Luke Hoth data points and Luke Hoth is, is a tough one to find graded I found that w when it is graded very high like a UKG 85 or an AFA 85 the the multiples that you got to pay for versus a loose complete figure are such that it almost makes sense to roll the dice, try to find a really clean white Luke Hoth and, and send them in yourself for grading. That's not something I've done yet, but uh, it, it's awfully tempting just given the price disparity between a high grade loose graded figure and a loose complete figure. Now this one looked pretty nice. You know, it did have a scratch on the binoculars, which is common. It did have some scratches around the goggles. So I would say this is probably like an 80 or an 80 plus at best. You also have to really look at the feet the feet can oftentimes get a lot of scratches on it, uh, but I don't know. I mean, this was a pretty clean one. It would probably easily score an 80, and it sold for 42 bucks plus $6 shipping. And then the other data point was this one. This one looked to be just as good a condition. Uh, it did have maybe just a slight discoloring to the crotch area, but the, but the actual paint on him was actually, in my opinion, probably better than the other one. And this one sold for $27.95 plus $4.95 shipping. So, you know, given that loose complete you know loose graded figures can sell for two hundred dollars plus sometimes quite a bit higher than two hundred dollars plus uh to get one for let's call it thirty to forty dollars uh and, and try to grade it yourself it, it makes a lot of sense just given that price jump uh here was a really nice bosk and what i liked about this one is that i think that this one is the no coo version of bosk you can see on the back of the leg there that the hong kong had been kind of scarred out so I believe that this is the UK version, and it was sold over in the UK. It was pretty clean. It did have some maybe slight scratches on the back on the white uh, white portion of his jumpsuit there. Uh, on the front, it looked pretty clean, but again, some scratches around that black cross on his, uh, on his vest there. But uh, overall, a really clean example. A little bit of white paint overspray around the straps on his flight suit, but the limbs looked pretty good. It did have a little bit of rub there on his thumb. And the feet were pretty good, although they did have some rub as well. So this is probably like an 80 grade, it, it would be my guess at best. But it's a harder to find no COO variant. It's just really tough to find this one. And that one sold for 27.98 pounds or about 32 US dollars plus shipping. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal for a tougher to find no COO Bosk. Uh, here was a Zuckus figure. And I wanted to point this one out because we talk about this all the time, that the Hong Kong COO for Zuckus, which is what this is, they can come with or without the circles on the backs of the knees and the heels. And you can see very clearly right here that the, this, this one has the circle variation. You can see those little tiny circles there and right there on the knees and the heels. So that's what that label means when you see that on the AFA label, circles on knees and heels, because there is a Hong Kong variation without those marks on the back. Uh, but this one sold for $53 and it was super clean. Uh, the eyes are the number one thing where you get the rub, and that one seemed to be pretty good. Although the chest maybe has some slight discoloration or scratches going on there, but this is probably like an 80 or 80 plus grade condition. Uh, maybe not with the hands. It looks like his right hand there has some scratching going on. So, you know, it's, it may, may not be perfect, but it, it was a pretty nice looking figure. Uh, 5357 took that one home plus shipping. Uh, same seller also had IG88. And uh, this one was the Hong Kong variation. You can see right here on the back where it says Hong Kong. There is a no COO variation where that is, is scarred out. And there is also a PBP variation as well as a POC red eyes variation for IG-88. And he can come in gray plastic or silver plastic. But uh, 
This one had uh, the hollow eyes. As you can see, these two little eyes right here are hollowed out. Um, the Hong Kong can also come with non-hollowed eyes. Uh, this one is the silver variation, I believe. And then there's also a kind of a flat gray version of the Hong Kong IG-88. And they're pretty affordable. You know, you can get a near mint-ish condition for 15 to 25 bucks usually. This one sold for 14.50 plus 5.13 shipping. Uh, I wanted to talk about this one. This one was in the thumbnail. And you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to pay a lot of money for the green armor Dengar. And it's just a discoloration that happens with certain uh, factory uh, paints for this Dengar. And you can see how green that paint has turned. Now, ones that are super uniform, where it almost looks like a factory air, people will pay a lot of money for those. This one is not nearly as uniform. You can see that's kind of a lot, of, a lot of discoloration and almost like a patina look, so to speak, with like uh, classic cars. And uh, this one, you know, it, it, again, it was not perfect, but it, this, this green can come very uniform on certain uh, you know, degraded figures, but uh, this one sold for twelve fifty two. But I've seen people pay three and four times that number for really uniform green armor Dengars on Facebook. So it's it's a degradation. It's not a variant. It's just a degradation that I wanted to point out because it is pretty cool to look at. Uh, here's a good close up here. You can see how it's not uniform at all. But I have seen examples where that green paint is super uniform. It almost looks like it's factory applied versus. Um, you know, just discoloration. But uh, this one very clearly is discoloration from over time. Next up, I've got a cloud car pilot. Again, I'm assuming that these accessories are not repro, although there is a slight shade difference to those, so you never know. Uh, those are commonly reproduced accessories for that cloud car pilot. The figure itself was in pretty good shape, just some light marks on the chest there. Uh, you got to look out for the boots and the legs to make sure that this they don't have too much damage. This one did have a little bit, but again, be very careful with these loose, complete figures. You just never know if these are reproduction accessories or not. So I only buy from trusted sellers when, when I see loose, complete figures that I want to get graded. So anyway, that one sold for $51 plus $513 shipping. This lot was very interesting. It was a lot of 77 figures, excuse me, 87 figures, as well as some last 17 figures, lots of accessories. There were two graded figures. It included seven last 17 figures, General Lando, Luke Poncho, Han and Carbonite, Luke Stormy, Warwick, Rumba, and Anakin Skywalker. <clears throat> uh, the Luke Skywalker farm boy included a lettered saber. And then two the two graded figures were a Weequay AFA 80+, and then a Luke Hoth AFA 75+, uh, three Max Rebo band members. The organ is missing a key. So, I, you know, it's really tough to value something like this when you have such limited photos. But it didn't stop the bidding. It's, it didn't stop the bidding at all. It sold for $1,750 plus $1,950 shipping. A pretty interesting lot with lots of first 12, last 17, two graded figures. Um, just a, a pretty wide assortment with lots of accessories. So just thought I'd show that just because you don't see these big lots sell that often. And again, pricing this, I don't know how you price something like this, but I'm sure that resellers probably tried to figure out what was complete, what was not, and then what they could resell and what they could keep, what they could grade, um, things like that. <clears throat> but I, I did want to point that, that sale out. Uh, next up, I've got a couple of different Amanamon that sold. Uh, this one sold for $254.99 plus $10 shipping, and it included the coin. And then this one also included the coin, but sold for $340. So, you know, it's a pretty wide disparity in terms of the price points for some of these, but uh, this one was two. Let's call that about two sixty-five. This one sold for three forty. So that's a you know when you when you take a percentage, of, the percentage delta on that is pretty substantial. So you got to really look at these figures closely and decide what kind of grade, what kind of condition they're in before you pull the trigger on it. But that at least gives you a couple of data points to work with there. Uh, next up, we've got a loose complete Rambo with the coin that sold for one thirty-seven fifty on eleven bids plus eleven eighty-five shipping. And then finally, I've got a pretty interesting Power of the Force Imperial Sniper from 1985. And these don't come up very often at auction, and I was curious to see whether this one would sell or not. It was advertised as complete, and it sold for $540, which seems like a really big number. Mint on card, usually those blisters are very yellowed, very fragile. I, I believe we looked at one that sold, uh, that was a mint on card example that was a yellowed 75 that sold for big money. It was around $800 of memory served. So $540 plus $35 shipping for a loose complete one. Uh, it just gives you a couple of data points there if you're into these kind of mini rigs. 
Anyway, that's all I really had for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.